Buenos dias, statisticians. We're heading on to section 3-4, which are measures of position. Some uh, books call them measures of location. Uh, they're all relative to your data set. Where do different data items fall? That's what we're going to talk about. And the four measures of position are z-scores, percentiles, deciles, and quartiles. Those are the ones we're going to be covering. These are used to locate the relative position of a data value in a data set. For example, um, let's say you get a 70 on a test. Well, that's 70 out of 100 points. But where do you rank in comparison to everybody else? When you take those standardized tests, they use those in the fields of uh, education and health-related fields. So this is section introduces measures of relative standing, which are numbers showing the location of data values relative to the other values within the data set. For example, when you take the standardized test, they look at your scores as compared to the scores of everybody who took that test. They can be used to compare values from different data sets or to compare values within the same data set. The most important concept is the z-score. We will also discuss percentiles and quartiles as well as statistical graph called the box plot. Now the box plot we will get to in section 3.5. For example, if you are in the 80th percentile, it means 80% of the values fall below that. So if you're in the 80th uh, percentile, that means there was 80% of the people scored less than you did. And 20% of the values fall above it. So only 20% scored higher than you. If a value is at the 50th percentile, it's in the middle of the data set and it's called the median. You already know how to find that. That's the middle of the data set. Here's the z-score. A z-score is found by subtracting the mean from the value and dividing the result by the standard deviation. So it's got value minus mean over standard deviation. This gives the number of standard deviation that a value, a data value x, is above or below the mean. The formula looks like this. So your data value, remember that's x, minus the mean with the x bar on top over the standard deviation. This is for your sample and your population. They mean the same thing, just different variables to represent the mean and the standard deviation. You round z-scores to two decimal places and z-scores can be negative. So here's what you'll get when you calculate your z-scores and in order to interpret them. Ordinary values in your data set should fall within two standard deviations or two, you know, things of your mean. And mean, the z-score of your mean is always going to be zero. So whenever a value is less than, than the mean, it's going to be negative. So ordinary values fall between negative two and two with your z-score. Unusual values are a lot further from the mean, you know, over two standard deviations or over two um, on your z-score. Very easy to calculate. So let's do an example. A student scored 65 on a calculus test that had a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. She scored 30 on a history test with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of 5. Compare her relative positions on the test. This is what we're talking about. In other words, they're saying, which class did she, is she at higher standing in? Is she a higher, in higher standing in calculus or in history? Note that if the z-score is positive, the score is above the mean. If the z-score is negative, the score is below the mean. All right, so let's start off. We need to find the z-score. So here's our formula. Z equals the x, and notice I color-coded them. The data values are in red, the means are in blue, and the standard deviation I have in green. So all I have to do is plug those numbers in for each of these classes. So for the calculus, the z-score is going to be 65, that's what she scored, minus the mean of 50, divided by the standard deviation of 10. And then for the history class, the z-score is going to be 30, minus the mean of 25, over the standard deviation of 5. So your z-score on your calculus class, when you do that all down, is 1.5, and, and the z-score for history is 1. You can see that this one's higher. That means it's further from the mean, further to the right of the mean. So she's going to have a higher standing in her calculus class than in her history class. She's in the upper part of her calculus class. Okay, 
I want you to do this one on your own, and I'll check your notes, but it says find a z-score for each test and t uh, t state which is larger. So they give test A and test B, the mean are these two numbers in blue, and here's the standard deviation. So I want you to do one just like that last problem that I did, and uh, I will check that on your notes. When all data for a variable are transformed into z-scores, the resulting distribution will have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. A z-score then is actually the number of standard deviations each, va each value is from the mean for a specific di distribution. Well, I'm gonna go ahead into percentiles a little bit. We're gonna do about half of the notes in your packet today. So here's what a percentile is. It's the measure of location used in educational and health related fields to indicate the position of an individual in a group. You know, when you do, when you're babies, uh, when you're a baby, the doctor says, oh, he's on the 90th percentile of the chart, or she's on the 10% percentile on the chart for growth or for height or for weight or whatever. So that's the two fields we use them the most. They're 99 percentiles denoted with P sub 1, P sub 2, all the way up to P sub 99. They divide the set of data into 100 groups with about 1% of the values in each group. Percentiles are not the same as percentages. I touched on this earlier. If you get a 72% on a test, that's just the test, how many you got right. If you are in the 72nd percentile, that compares you to the individuals. Uh, for example, that means only 28% of the class is scoring higher than you. So it's a totally different concept. Percentile graphs are constructed using the same values as cumulative frequency graphs, or OGIBs. So if you look back at your OGIBs, we're going to be doing the same thing, but the decimals are converted to percents. So just as a review, we're going to go ahead and do this one. The frequency distribution for the systolic blood pressure readings in millimeters of, merc mil millimeters of mercury are random, are, of 200 selected college students are shown here. Construct a percentile graph frequency, if you remember, when you start out, it's the cumulative. So I start out with a 24 there, and then I add 62 to it. So I add 62, and then 80, and at 24 plus 62 is 86. Then I do 86 plus 72 to get 158, and so on. Those are our cumulative frequencies. To find the percent, I'm going to take 24 and divide by 200. So 24 over 200. So that's 0.12, which is 12%. Then 86 divided by 200 is 0.43, which is 43%, and so on. So you fill out your chart, and then you graph them, just like you did with the O gives. And what I want you to do is that's something I'm going to have you do on your own. And we're just going to end the notes there. That's enough to get us going, and I will see you tomorrow.